What's up nerds? Uh, this is Aaron again. Um, I have a little bit of uh, an irrigation solution that I've been working on. Um, I just wanted to show you real quick. Maybe it's something you can implement in places where you don't have ready, uh, ready, readily available water. Um, and uh, so here, let's just jump straight to it. All right, what we're looking at here is my service berries uh, just starting to wake up and in, interplanted are the potatoes that I made a video about uh, here recently. We have come about a uh, pretty good spring drought, which is kind of weir weird. We haven't had rain for like, oh, two and a half weeks. Um, so I needed to water out here and rather than running uh, hundreds of feet of main uh, line piping to get water out here from my well, um, I set up a drip system off the back of my truck um, out of an IBC tote, but uh, it, this is just half inch uh, tubing and these are one gallon per hour drip emitters. Uh, if I had to do this again, uh, I would probably go with two gallon an hour for this specific purpose because it takes a really long time to get enough water out uh, for what I'm trying to do here. But so I'll walk you back along. The way I set up this system was, well, I didn't have enough pressure, uh, head pressure off of just the, uh, the head pressure from my IBC toast in the back of my truck. So you're looking at ba basically one PSI per 27 inches, I believe, of water column. So that, you know, you're only looking at a couple PSI, maybe three PSI tops. Well, a couple PSI would be closer to it and when this thing is full. So what I did to solve that problem, first of all, I bought an inverter. This one is a Schumacher, a 750 watt. I'll go into a little bit about how you have to size these things. Uh, and I'm using that, the extension cord, to run this small little star water system centrifugal pump. I actually got this pump given to me by a friend of mine. Thanks, Billy. Uh, but that is applying a pretty good amount of pressure uh, to the line and making my drip emitters work correctly. Okay, so the thing I wanted to talk to you about with sizing uh, an inverter was your amps. All right, so. I don't know how many of you guys have uh, any electrical knowledge, but um, you need an inverter large enough, powerful enough, to power whatever pump you would run. So, like I said, this is a 750 watt inverter, alright? So, the way you have to size these things, watts are like your total power. So, um, in electrical means, watts equals volts times amps. That's how you need to look at this. Okay, so if you are running a uh, 120 watt pump, which you can see I've got two 120 watt plugs. This pump that I'm running is 120 watts. Um, so if you're running a 120 watt plug uh, or a 120 watt device, then you would, sorry, I'm saying watt, 120 volt device, then you would divide your watts by your volts. Um, and that number would give you the maximum amount of amps that that inverter could run at, at that voltage, okay? Um, so voltage is like your pressure, if you were, the, as is a good analogy. And amps are like your flow when it comes to electricity, okay? So at that, at the pressure of 120 volts, then you could run the flow of... X number of amps, uh, you know, based on what you needed, so, or based on your voltage. So um, this specific pump, you can see, is rated at 1.75 amps. Now, what's also weird about this, or interesting about this, if you look on the back here, um, the UL label is 115 volts, 3.5 amps. 
Um, now I believe that's, I'm not sure if that's what it was tested at, uh, but, uh, or if that's its surge rating, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this 1.7, this 1.75 is its operating um, range because you can actually see that on the display. Uh, that's kind of nice thing about that inverter I bought is it actually shows you the wattage being pulled. So um, you can tell how many amps it's actually drawing as well. Okay, coming back around to the front here, uh, you can see this this inverter just attaches directly to your batteries. A lot of inverters that you can buy, especially uh, lower amp rating or sorry, lower watt rating inverters, can plug into your cigarette outlet. That isn't going to, and this one can as well. Actually, it has a separate set of leads, but that you're not going to pull very many amps um, if you're inverting through that the small wires and the fuse on your cigarette uh, outlet. So attaching best or directly to battery is one option. Another way you could do it is tie into your fuse box into your power distribution system of your vehicle. I might do that in the future. This was just kind of a uh, simple way to get the system going. And it's, I'm not driving down the road with it while I'm watering, obviously. So just sitting here with the hood open or actually there's enough clearance I can close the hood with these wires still attached as well. Um, either way, it, I, it's not a problem because the truck's sitting still to have the hood open. Um, downside of this system is I have to have, I can only leave this running for very short periods of time without the truck running because it'll run my battery down. Um, I guess one option would be you could set up a second, maybe deep cycle, uh, marine battery or something like that. Um, if you have room, um, or, or some kind of mobile battery system, um, would be really nice and you wouldn't have to burn so much fuel, um, with this big eight cylinder uh, engine to keep this system running. Uh, I tried pulling my, uh, smaller four cylinder engine vehicle over here and I don't know why, but, um, I'm getting over 15 amps off the battery and the inverter doesn't like it. So it just shuts off. So not sure what's going on there, but, uh, anyway, I guess let me know what you guys think. Um, toss any comments or questions. Um, and I'll try to get back to you. Thanks guys. Have a good one.